the scorpion is supposed to be Betty Gray. <laughs> Go ahead. We're on the air. Yeah, all right. It's me and Betty. Uh, Gee, thanks. Um, greetings, everyone, and welcome to Mega Life 21 Live. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and uh, I am here with our very long time uh, voiceover artist, William H. Moore of the Third, for the second time on Mega Life 21. Uh, live. Thank you for joining us hey, once Jimmy, again. Thanks for having me, buddy. Thank All you. Right. Very good. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello. Great to have you. And uh, the last time we were visiting with you, um, we spoke about football, professional athletes, and and how uh, and, and and William Morrow's experience with football. And we also uh, gave you demonstrations of William H. Morrow the Third's uh, voice. He did uh, uh, mock commercials. You know, uh, he had his readings with him. This time we're going to discuss the blunders in the business world and how the problem often starts at the top and all the incompetence that is out there, not only employees, but management in, in uh, corporate America. There, there seems to be not only um, a lack of quality control and a, and, and a, a uh, deterioration of overall quality in American products, but Customer service is horrible, and, and there are many people that just, they call the company, they're, they're put on hold forever, and when they finally get a well, human... Well, I'm not to interrupt, you have to go through a menu of hitting how many different buttons before you do get a real viable person, yeah. which is frustrating as can be. I don't, yeah. I don't know if they're playing the odds, figuring most people will give up, say, I'll try later, I, I don't need this. But you're right. You're right. You know, so. it's almost like they have contempt for the customer, even though their uh, TV advertisements uh, tell you otherwise mm -hmm. that they, they care about the customer and the quality is job one, like the old Ford commercial. And uh, it, it's it's far from the truth. They they just uh, um, they apologize to you profusely, but they most of the time they'll they'll offer to give you. Uh, maybe uh, credit on your next purchase. Well, they're playing the odds, too. You know, and instead of making it right, uh, uh, and, and, and a lot of times, the, what I do, I blame the, I blame the lack of customer service and uh, um, the uh, incompetence of the average employee. I blame it on management because all the examples start from the top. And They are to be held accountable, or they should be. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, you're right, what you said. These guys, CEOs, what have you, are so high up there with whatever, your corporate headquarters, they don't have a clue, most times, what is going on in each individual store, restaurant, whatever the chain, franchise, or whatever it may be. Why are you CEO then? It just doesn't make sense. I've watched various TV shows. Uh, seen where CEOs go in disguised. You probably all know what I'm talking about, but we can't name the shows. And the CEO says, I had no idea this was going on. Well, why not? Another chain I know of, I'm sure they all do this possibly, maybe they don't. They have what they call spies that go into the various franchises of the food corporation to spy as a regular customer, see what's really going on. Yet, they tell the, the, the individual franchisee store when they're coming. So does that really make you a spy? No. Nope. They know you're coming. It defeats the purpose. Why right? are you letting them know you're coming? Why tip them off, right? Don't show up. Take your family. Let's go out for a burger or whatever, chicken or whatever. And watch, observe. Don't tell them we're coming in to see how you're doing. That, I just don't understand that kind of thinking. I do not understand it one bit. Uh, it was my organization. I'm not telling you. You don't know if they're coming every day, once a month, once a week, once a quarter. I'm not going to tell, I'm not telling you. You should be running this. You should not need me to have spies in there, seeing how you treat your your, your clientele, customer base, whatever, guests, whatever you want to call them nowadays, it's unnecessary. 
Why should you be slacking when we're not there? Yeah. Uh, what are you getting paid for? You came in, applied for the job, filled an application out, had, uh, I'm sure, more than one, probably three or more interviews. Why? You wanted the job. Now you got it. Now you really don't want to do the job. And this goes so what was this all about? I'm this sorry. Goes, and this goes for management, too. I, I mean, uh, if you're a manager, manage, for God's sakes. Oh, they don't really have... Most managers think it's cracking the whip and being, and being rough and negative. They don't have the first well, not necessarily, clue about management. Not necessarily cracking the whip in disciplinary actions. I'm talking about just being aware of what's going on in your department, well, in, in your company. They're not. It's to make the make your rounds, walk around, check everything, ask well, customers, well, well, uh, are you okay? Is everything no. taken care of? You know where I go for my coffee every afternoon. Yes. You don't see any of that. I've had to tell them, and I don't even work there, uh, what's wrong. I said, I said, this should be part of your daily checklist. First thing in the morning, test the urinals, flush the toilets, make sure everything is working. The blow dryers for the hands or towels, make sure everything's loaded. It's, there's always something wrong. Now, why do I have to tell the management that all the time? Uh, they're not on top of things. This is not good. This is not managing. They, the employee morale, where I go, is horrendous. Their turnover of employees is awful. People hate well, it. Well, retail's like that. Fast retail, food, retail, fast food, notorious. Like that. Yeah. Why? Why? Hey, Why high, does it have to be like high that? High turnover rate. Why? Because uh, a lot, quite often, the employees are very disgruntled. Well, why are they disgruntled? Uh, because yeah. their managers are... Not are, real true managers, they're, they're only not title only. They're not true managers. They're, they have a, they just, just have a title. The managers often go by the book a little too much, which means they don't, they're not allowed to actually manage and use their skills and abilities to improve things. So, uh, and some of them are just abusive. Now, granted, I think a big problem with the deterioration of customer service overall and quality is the fact that people are not getting paid a living wage nowadays Which because I of totally agree because of, because, of, because, of, because, of, because of greed. Now, when you pay somebody a living wage, you can always turn around and tell them, "Hey, we pay you X amount of dollars per hour. We expect you to do your job. If you're a manager, manage, uh, make your rounds, uh, have a checklist with you, write on 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 a clipboard what needs to be changed." But what the what the problem is? What are. would hurt you to have weekly meetings with your employees and call a vent meeting or let the steam out? And, and, and I what, want to hear your complaints. I want to take it personally. What are your complaints? What do you like? What don't you like? And welcome. What do you think is wrong here? And welcome honest right. input. Do not be afraid to give us your honest opinion. Now, what will happen with a lot of uh, jobs, a lot of companies? is that they're afraid because they have this this egomaniacal manager that if you complain to the manager, they'll reduce your hours. How dare you criticize How me? How dare you criticize me? I yeah. I am a, I am a, a, yeah. a general store manager, and I, I'm the one that hired you, and I can fire you, and, and they, you know, they abuse their authority. So people are afraid to go to this type of meeting and give their honest input, and that's, that's wrong. People should be allowed to vent honestly without repercussions because well, this, every every positive <coughs> input means an improvement. And maybe possibly more profit too. Yes. And maybe run. everybody can be helpful. Maybe it's better if corporate sends a, a representative down and oversteps the individual store managers and that person meets with the employees. Said everything will be anonymous here. Don't worry. Let's hear it. Yeah. What do you, what's wrong? What's right? Where can you see improvement? And also a customer. What are you happy about? What are you unhappy and, about? And also, and also a customer suggestion box. Actually, having a box period is not a bad idea where people well, people can anonymously, without their using their name, write down their gripes, and uh, a regional manager will will or or um, yeah, I would say 
I would say a regional manager because a regional district, whatever you want to. Has to be call somebody it. over the general. Somebody manager. that's not involved personally in the store as management. Somebody outside of the store, a, a little higher up in the corporate chain. To see what's and, going uh, on. Uh, 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 people are not working with people well in the corporate world. Yes, many, some corporations are. Uh, but the majority, I don't think, really are that well, especially the fast food industry and the retail industry, we said earlier. Uh, they need help. They really do. Right, and, and if there's an excessive amount of complaints in, in the suggestion box, the regional would go and take this, this the general store manager uh, aside and say, hey, I want to go over these complaints. There's a lot in your, in your branch, in your store, and this is... Uh, uh, unacceptable uh, what are you what are you doing around here to allow this many complaints from customers and from employees well you have to make sure the complaints are valid too because you, get, you yeah, get a lot of punk kids that want to tease and kid just like voters and with with ballots a write in vote they put Mickey Mouse and whatever you never know who is truly telling the truth at times you know it's some you, you, you know it's some bartender from pub 46 in Clifton New Jersey said when uh, um, Barack Obama was uh, um, running for office against John McCain and Sarah Palin. She says, oh, I'm going to vote for McCain and Palin because I think Sarah Palin is cute. Because she's cute. Because she is That's cute. not a valid reason to vote for somebody. That's abusing your right to vote, I think, personally. But Who the hell wants that's a whole different story, stupid nincompoop votes like that? And this is what happens. Uh, uh, as far Of course you're not going to pay attention to frivolous complaints in a suggestion box. Of course you throw it out if you're a regional manager. I would toss anything ridiculous out. But, um, you know, anything that is valid should be known by upper management. And uh, Why not put a sticker on your door? You have other stickers on your doors. You know, a closing times, you know, Monday through uh, Sunday, what have you. Why not another sticker? We value your comp your comments. Please ask for a manager should you have anything to say. Some fast uh, simple right away. I some mean, fast uh, food companies, I believe it's uh, uh, it's White Castle. They have an eight hundred <clears throat> number where uh, yeah. customers can call and, and and vent and give their opinions. Yeah. And they have this uh, call center that's taking the complaints or the suggestions or or, or compliments, and uh, they forward it to White Castle. Yeah. Work to corporate, which I think is an excellent uh, thing too, and it could be anonymous if you're an employee. It could be an anonymous uh, report. Um, this is positive, uh, even if it's critical, criticizing every little bit. Um, look, you, you don't grow and improve by constantly getting pats on the back and get and receiving. Well, sometimes compliments. you need to criticize because yeah. things are broken; they need to be repaired. Yeah. Uh, we've got a problem, you know, and don't you want to know your problems if you were the, the CEO of a major or up-and-coming, growing corporation? Um, <clears throat> you just need to. You need to listen to your people. <clears throat> you listen, need to listen to the people that come in as your clients or guests or whatever. Listen. Learn. There's always room for improvement. That's why I, me and William Morrow believe in uh, a company should have a, a Around the clock, twenty-four hour R and D uh, lab with engineers. Always, yes. uh, especially now, I mean, with uh, technology, American companies have their work cut out for them because of the Asian yes. countries. The Asian sure. companies are kicking their ass, and uh, I would say it's it's mandatory for an American company to have such around the clock R and D. But the thing is, you have to understand something. If somebody's getting uh, a minimum wage, which People can't survive on, and they eventually have to apply for welfare and food stamps. But you're still working in the meantime. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you're um, yeah you're working, but you can't even pay your bills, let alone have surplus cash left over to actually enjoy life. This this country, as you know, thrives on disposable income. Most of these jobs, these people have very little, if any, disposable income. It all comes in, it goes right out for the bills, the rent, the mortgage, whatever you want to... Well, mortgage, no, they're not paying the mortgage on these minimum wages. There's no chance of that. 
Uh, uh, people need help. You know what? Uh, you know, uh, many years ago, you know what a uh, assistant store manager for Pathmark Supermarkets General told me one time was a female. Um, we called her the Medusa or, or the witch, but yeah, you could tell she was really well loved. You know, her name was Athena Brock, uh, and uh, she used to have like. It looked like she had gallons of hairspray in her hair. <laughs> and, and she says to me, uh, my feeling about paying people less money, minimum wage, or uh, just less money, my feeling is that eventually, if a person becomes that desperate, then they will accept anything. No. No. If, if they become desperate, in other words, we will exploit you right. as a company. Yeah, they will. Because you're desperate, so it, we will treat you like shit, pay you chicken feed salaries, uh, make you work, do try to do the job. Because if you don't like it, there's somebody out there who will. Yeah, but try to make you do the job right. with two or three people because they're taking advantage of the fact that the job market is in total... Uh, 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 Chaos. I mean, isn't that a great foundation for your corporate ethics? Nice foundation. Yeah. We don't care. We're going to exploit you, use you the whole way. We don't yeah. care. They about don't care. You. They're saying, "Isn't that wonderful?" That's what your corporation is built on. Yeah. Well, she was saying that she didn't. She didn't care. She didn't care because they're taking advantage of uh, desperate uh, people, just like some industries, like the diet industry that they might have a snake oil diet product that they're trying to push. Inf well, most do. Infomercials. Yeah. They are taking advantage of desperate, very unhappy people that are obese, that uh, want Look help. For anything that sounds good. They need help, and yes. they're, they're exploiting and when them. You're spending money, and you're getting probably stems and twigs, lots of filler. Uh, that's fraud in my book. Oh, there's, I, there's a lot of filler. I don't know why the government isn't going after these dietary or supplement or alternative medicine companies that are fraudulent. Test them. Yeah. It's not, if your claim to what's listed on your label is not in there, oh, see you in court. Yeah. I mean, high, we'll fruct see you in court. high fructose corn syrup is a very common, cheap, and not so healthy filler. Um, some nutrition companies that make uh, sports drinks, uh, protein powders, they, they will sometimes use less than. As a filler, instead of... But why don't they list that? They, you know what it is? By law, they have to list it, list it in the predominance... Yeah, the, the most potent right. part, the highest... Opiate. The highest percentage even of... Even that's been found to be false now. And the government does nothing about that. They're finding that's false. Because... It's just uh, not true. Just like Amazon.com got caught selling fraudulent uh, nutritional supplements, like I, I told... Dr. William J. Eisman on progressive discussions. They uh, the companies today are deregulated by the crooks in Washington. Usually, the Re Republican Congress makes sure that all companies are deregulated, as, as opposed to what FDR, Truman, Eisenhower, the, the companies were regu you, regulated. I strongly believe in regulation. You have you need, to defang. You need people. government intervention. People are getting hurt without. Regulation, you have utter chaos. Without with chaos, the only ones who win are the corporations. And uh, yeah, com companies are companies. They they're allowed to lie to you and deceive you. You don't know what you're buying. And sell you garbage, shoddy merchandise. Uh, uh, but look at restaurants getting sued because they they disguise whatever they're offering on the menu. It's a it's a different kind of substitute fish or what have you. But it's not the one they advertise, which is more expensive. Or not advertise, but list on their menu, what have you. Bait and switch. Yeah. They often use yeah. the old bait and switch. Uh, switch yeah, uh, or they color, color it. They use a red dye. And some of these groceries threw a red lion was sued years ago for using a red dye spray or whatever on its meats to make it look more red, meaning more fresh. Well, that's disguising the browning of the meat, meaning it's starting to rot. You want people to eat this? Possibly get sick? Possibly die. Yeah. Many people die every year, remember, from food poisoning. Thousands, thousands every year. Uh, and yet these people are to make a profit coloring their foods to make it look more fresh. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's disclaimers. 
with microscopic letters in it. I mean, why, why? Especially on TV. The yes. fine print is so small, they give you like one second to really read a whole paragraph. Uh, it cannot be done. I mean, you, it just can't be the read. Thing that is, the, the thing is, the thing is that the most important uh, uh, asset is is your reputation. Your reputation is extremely important, and uh, very quickly a, a company's reputation could be tarnished. Yeah, but you know, it's odd we forget too fast. But they species. think well, they think short term. People will get over it. They will. Every years years ago with the fire, uh, the Ford. And was it Firestone or Bridgestone? The tires kept rolling over the Ford uh, SUV. One blamed the other. I think it was Firestone. I never heard anything more about it. It was finally forgotten. That was it. Because they realized, we forget. Or we just like, I've heard enough. I don't need to hear any more about this. So they're playing the odds. They're gambling. And they realize people do forget. And that's not right. It, you need these groups that uncover things and keep hammering at home and saying, hey, wait a minute. These whistleblowers and what have consumer you. Consumer protection you, uh, they're groups. They're looking out for you. They're not looking out to become yeah. billionaires or whatever. They're trying to protect your interests, because, because, but it seems like they get crucified sometimes because, for uh, doing so. I mean, since these corporations contribute multiple millions of dollars uh, uh, to as campaign contributions to these uh, uh, people in Washington when they run for re-election, they owe them favors. And this Always is a favor that should be criminal. Should you accept and let people die or yes. what have you or become sick? This is why the company. Aren't you an accessory? Yeah. This is yeah. why the companies are deregulated. And when they're deregulated, they're crooked. They're, they're dishonest. They, they lie to you and they do, uh, you know, th look, why should you always have to get a, a magnifying glass or a microscope to read the disclaimer? Why should you well, be fooled as a consumer? Uh, like a consumer, too, what I hate, too, is a mail-in rebate. I detest oh, those. I hate, I hate those. Why? Why not just do it right here in store? They're playing the odds again. They'll make more money that way because the majority of people, myself included, I can't be bothered. You need this, UPC code, this receipt, blah, 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 cut off this thing on the bar, blah, blah, blah. Most people say, screw it, I don't care. Uh, they're playing the odds, meaning they'll make more money because they don't have to give that money back, that $100 mail-in yeah. rebate. They'll keep that money. It's just gambling. Yeah, people are not going to go through the trouble of mailing in a rebate. Well, Jimmy, it's like mail order. Mail order, if you get, I think it's 3 to 5% response on a mail order ad, that is phenomenal. So if you only get 3 yeah. or so percent complaining or, or, or mailing in their mail-in rebate, you're making big bucks. That's yeah. big, big money. Or, so, or, the, or coupons in general. I mean, I know ShopRite, which is a popular supermarket in our area, uh, in New Jersey, uh, they have what they call a clipless coupon, yeah. which is a silly yeah. name. But what they're doing is they're putting the item on sale so you don't have to clip, cut and out the coupon. bring in a piece of paper and give it to the girl yeah. and scan it and do this. Same should be for a rebate. What is the purpose of a mail-in rebate? Yeah. Why? Because they're making money off of it. That's why. They're not doing this because yeah. they like you. They're making money. They're playing the odds. Yeah. The majority can't be bothered. It's that simple. Now, I have something to say pertaining to what is going on when this show is uh, was recorded. Uh, Black Friday was not too long ago. I don't mean to interrupt you. The red light came on. It's time for a break. We'll be back. Yeah. All right, minutes. all right. I'll continue with the story about Black Friday and the retail industry when we're back from our break. You got it. All right. With part two. Okay. All right. We are back with part two. Of uh, Mega Life 21 Live with William H. Morrow III, uh, uh, voiceover artist extraordinaire. And we were talking about the business world, business blunders, the problem starts at the top. And I, I want to start off um, for a, a part two with uh, a discussion about Black Friday because Black Friday 2013 took place um, this past Friday. Uh, but now it's Sunday. Um, pe what people don't realize, I'm talking about individuals that um, 
go to a shopping area, to a particular store that is advertising sales. They go there before the crack of dawn, sometimes in, in the middle of the night, they camp out there so they can be the first one so they, they, can, they can buy what they want without fear of the store running out. So neurotically they do this and uh, when the store opens they rush in like a herd of cattle, like, like a stampede. Uh, sometimes people get hurt, sometimes people get killed, they get trampled. It has, ha it has happened, which is kind of ironic since the day before uh, they all got around and, and uh, said grace or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. gave, to give, and gave thanks <laughs> to the, the, the good things in their life. And then the day after, they, uh, they rushed madly into the store, uh, almost trampling each other. Now, what I want to say is that retail, the oldest trick in the book that these these uh, Googles, these idiots, these jabronis don't understand is that the uh, retail industry will jack up the regular price of the item that they plan on putting on sale. So you, you really are not getting well, the 10% off. Well, that's true, but it's not true of certain items, too, because they did have a 32-inch TV some stores uh, for $98. So you really can't jack up the price too much to get 98 but then in small print, supply is limited. Those supplies could be only maybe three or four TVs per store, but that's a loss leader. They can write that off because they figure you'll come in and get other things anyway. So it's all, it's just like grocery stores, how the companies pay the grocery chains to buy space on the shelves and at what level on the shelves. And, Eye contact, lower, and higher, and caps. And caps. The, on, they pay for placement, and it works psychologically for the most part. Of course, eye, really level, eye level probably costs the most. End caps probably cost the most. Yeah, because you see that as you walk, it's the, the greater amount of traffic. This is visibility. Yeah, they're they're charging according to visibility, uh, but um, but I guess still going back to what we said earlier. Real, I just. I don't believe in mail-in rebates. Yeah. I think it should be illegal. Do the rebate in store. You don't need to mail in. Really, uh, that's it. Well, um, I agree. I, I don't do it. And I think most people won't bother doing it either. Uh, it's just too much of a hassle. Give them the discount right up front. Don't make them mail in a damn rebate. Yeah, see my phone is 179 at some supplier. You know, $79 after a $100 mail-in rebate. Well, let me just give you $79 right here. Yeah. Why do I have to pay $179 go through all of this and mail this and cut this out and type, you know. I just don't go for this. I think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So. Well, with retail, um, they, they use a technique, a very old technique also called bait and switch. We mentioned it before. And uh, like you said, if an item is on sale and it's a true sale, like let's say it's a particular flat screen television like you, you mentioned, but they have limited supply. Mm -hmm. Now, since it's on sale, they are going to blow out of those flat screen TVs in, no, in record well, time. Especially if you only have four or so yeah. per store. So, so when you go there and they're out of the sale product, of, of course the salespeople will show you Items that are not on sale, much more expensive items. They did it with uh, me and one of my exes in the past. We were we went shopping for a mattress at Rockaway Bedding, and the uh, the mattress mm -hmm. was not in stock. But we have this other one for not too much more, right over here. Yeah, right? they yes. try to show us some more expensive right. mattress. Yeah. And I said, when do you anticipate getting the sale item in a restock? Oh, we don't know. Oh, really? You don't know? It's, it, it's advertised in the flyer that you have this particular mattress. I, I forgot what it was. Sealy Posturepedic? I forgot. Or Serta. But the point is, it's advertised in their, fly, in their circular. Uh, in their, I don't know why they call it a circular, because it's square. But, you know, it's advertised, and you, you, ought, you have that limited amount of the advertised you just item. You just wanted to get me in the store. It's all you wanted. And, and That's come, what it comes and down And come to. on. Management has no idea when, when the next shipment will arrive. 
It's a sale item for God's sake. How do you know those four were reserved for families and friends yeah. already? Right. Oh, they're sold out. I'm sorry. You don't know that. But, Come on. So man. this is a this is a fraudulent <clears throat> sale, a documented sale. It's fraudulent because. Uh, they don't know when they're going to be restocked, which is a bullshit. Why not make it like they do in the grocery stores? If you advertise this and you're out of it, you must give each customer who wants one a rain check. No, I want that mattress for $99. Order me one, please. That's and they sale. must do that. That's a, now, now you've got a sale. So whether you run out of those four, okay, so I'll wait a few weeks. For $99 mattress, I'll take it. Yeah. Give you a rain check, please. Order me one. Here's my name, phone number, blah, blah, blah. Now you see a difference in your sales strategies, wouldn't you? Well, a company, Am I right or wrong? Correct. Big, right. Yeah, big difference. Well, a company that does that, uh, if somebody wanted to, wanted to, they can get them in trouble for that. Yeah. yeah. They can get them in trouble for that. Uh, they try every tactic and technique available, and it's, it's almost, uh, sadly, it's all like legal fraud. Or, uh, I don't know why it's legal, but it doesn't make sense. They let them get away with so much. Yes. And give them credit. Yes, they need to make their profit. They're a corporation. They hire plenty, thousands of employees. But don't screw the public or the people, your customers in the meantime. It's your bread and butter. Yeah. Your customers. I mean. uh, it's just not right. We need ethics. We need morals back in the business world more. So if you have an item that's on sale and the sale begins on a certain date and ends on a certain date, you better make sure that all your customers that come in asking for it either get the item, make sure it's in stock, or give them a rain check. A rain check. Because it's, it's just not honest business practice yeah. to do that, the bait and switch, and, 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 and never get, get a restock, never get another shipment of the sale item that happens to be advertised, the advertised product. That should be law. You must provide a rate check of said, said sale item so, when you run out. So you need consumer protection, just like you need labor laws. I mean, but you have these consumer groups, these advocates. Where are they on these issues? What are they doing? I mean, I don't, don't just test yeah. products. I mean, fight for the public's rights of what they're purchasing, too. These ad campaigns companies use, as we said earlier, about the fine print and this and that, and it's legalese, and it doesn't make much sense to most people. Uh, really, where are these advocate groups themselves? A lot of people that work for any government, local government, you know, city, borough, state, whatever, a lot of them, I think they got their jobs through uh, cronyism, you know. Well, a lot of nepotism. They got lucky. Yeah, they got lucky somebody, because uh, a lot, many of them are incompetent. Uh, one, uh, one time, and this is going back to, oh gosh, 1990s. There was a, a restaurant in Garfield, New Jersey, that had a, a all-you-can-eat um, buffet. It was a Portuguese restaurant called The Fisherman. It was located in Garfield, New Jersey. It's not there any longer for for a long time, but. Um, I noticed that me and my family noticed that they were not putting out the freshly washed dishes. People were going up to the food with the same plate over and over again. Now, when you, when I scoop food from a buffet, okay, I don't touch my dish with the spoon that, you know, the, sir, the, uh, big scooping spoon that's in the, in the, uh, in the tray of food. It's not sanitary. As a courtesy to other people, I don't do that. But these morons were picking the food up, going clang, 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 you know, tapping the serving spoon on their dish, on their used dirty dish. And I said to the management, you have any clean plates to, you know, so these people, they're supposed to take a clean plate every time they get more food. They said, oh no, we don't have it. So I called the Garfield, New Jersey uh, Health Department, and I reported them, and they said, uh, "Oh, uh, there's no, uh, there's no evidence that uh, that it's unsanitary, and that you can catch someone's germs from that. It, it's not the, the they're allowed to do that." I go, "You oh, come I, on. really?" Come and on. then I mentioned about a, a 
in Hackensack, there was a, there's a bagel shop next to Pathmark, and I noticed that the person making the, uh, the bagel sandwiches was also at the cash register handling, taking the money with the, and was not replace, was not removing the disposable gloves. First of all, if somebody is handling food, they should never handle a cash register if they're handling food because money is filthy. You, God knows where people's hands have been. It, it, you know, money passes from a multitudes, probably in a day, maybe hundreds, if not thousands well, of, of people yeah. to touch it. And, and, you know, you don't touch food and, and then touch money. It's cross-contamination. And, and people in the food industry should know that. But, oh, no, the person did this handling money because the owner uh, probably was too ch cheap to hire a cashier. Well, years ago, Jimmy, uh, uh, one of the networks contracted an independent lab to test certain restaurants' yeah. cleanliness. At one or many, they found, you know, they put the, the, the swab in a petri dish to find bacteria and how it grows. Most of these restaurants, they found more bacteria on the plates than on the toilet seat in the restaurant. Wow. Now, what do you think you are eating off of? I'm sorry, it sounds horrible. So, so it the, is horrible. So this health You'd department. You better be aware. So this health, this local health department uh, official, whatever it was, it was dead wrong. And and, and the and the uh, the other health department official in uh, um, in Hackensack says that there's no evidence that uh, that uh, germs uh, are present on on money. That that germs uh, yes, there is. can be transferred. That's hey, not true. There is evidence. If you That's touch true. a doorknob. Billy yes. Morrow, if you touch a doorknob and the person before you had the flu, you're getting it. And open, you are getting the flu, especially when you. There's when no you, evidence of germs or bacteria. You bring your hand to your face and you rub your nose or you scratch it. Uh, that's not true. They were wrong. There is germs all over money. Cross contamination. Oh my God, I me! Mean, why? Why would they say handling raw chicken, meats, whatever? It's uh, it's everywhere. All it takes is one it's, one little touch. Is all it takes. Listen, if you cut raw chicken on a on a cutting board, follow and use the same cutting board to cut like uh, ve vegetables or salad. They're going to get it too unless you do a different board. Cucumber. You're going you're going to most likely pass on that salmonella to the to the salad or to the, the vegetables. It's cross contamination. You never use a cutting board for meat with it with ve uh, well, vegetables. You keep it separate. For for the public's health, I'm going to re repeat what I said to you on one of your shows a few weeks ago. According to the Harvard Health Newsletter, if you want to eat healthy like doctors or most doctors do, take your meats or chickens or what have you, turkeys, zap them in the microwave for two minutes. That's not long enough to do any cooking, but it will kill all the bacteria. Two minutes, zap them, take them out, and then cook them any which way you want. At least you've destroyed... The salmonella, the E. coli, what have you. Think about that. It, it will work. It's in your favor. So try that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I would say cross contamination is uh, uh, oh. the, the most common uh, 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 cause of people getting well, sick. What about you? Not you personally, but you're, you're having some raw chicken or whatever, and you get an itch. Or in your nose or in your eye. Okay. You just put bacteria right in your, your membrane. Mucous membrane. Uh, nasal membrane. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, salmonella can enter your system via mm -hmm. the mucous membrane. Just remember one thing. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't. You've got to be careful and cautious. Certain little rules, not many, but they can help you an awful lot in your family or friends yeah. or both. And what about the government uh, uh, law that uh, says that uh, food companies that make uh, hot dogs and or, or processed meats, uh, they allow a certain tiny percentage of like rodent droppings. Uh, uh, like in other words... Well, that's the same with peanut butter too. They're allowed so many rat hairs too, seriously. That's been for decades. Uh, they allow so many rat hairs, rod rod rodent droppings, as Jim just said. And uh, That's why I always I, say a kosher hot dog is the, like a Hebrew national. 
is is a much better quality. I don't know if I'd want one little rat hair in any of my. Food. I don't want any rat hair. Preferably, I'm sure we've all eaten some because we're just not. How would you know? But I prefer not to. This is the perfect example of company deregulation by these conservative politicians. When you deregulate, they're allowed to do anything they want. Look at China, for God's sakes. They were, uh, uh, there's always uh, contaminated or tainted uh, foods coming from China. Remember the recall of IAM's pet food? Oh, yeah. It killed how many animals? Yeah, there was like a melamine in it, uh, uh, some yeah. chemical from. But the, then you could go on to the, the cutting back with it. That's just a health problem. Then you look at sale items. And uh, how the consumer is getting screwed many times. You notice you get to, you go on, and you see some of these big bags of chips or pretzels or whatever on sale, incredible price. Well, I've discovered over the years, over the decades, the reason for those incredible prices. Something got screwed up during manufacturing. You will notice a bag of chips, for example, and it's on sale. When you open it in there, there are more crushed up pieces, something happened happened during the packaging process. It's effective. Right. And they, they figure about how to throw this out. Let's make 50 cents on the bag. Make something. Break Maybe it'll break even. Yeah, let's make something rather than just throw it out. But you notice, if you buy a regular bag at a regular price, you get a lot more of the bigger pieces that are intact. A lot more little, little tiny pieces, crushed pieces on the sale items. Same with the pretzels and other food items. I did go to a store years ago, I will not name it, they had a, uh, they told me their their three bean chili was wonderful. I bought it, and they weren't lying. It was three bean chili. It was three beans. It was all, you're right, all sauce, and there literally were three beans in the whole can. I said, this is insane. I, I didn't care, it was only a dollar or something, but uh I just thought, you know, I, I thought I'd get something really nice to eat, a nice three bean chili. Nice I, and thick I and heard rich a story and, by a, a person no. from Columbia, South America, that the, the whole grain bread actually had one, one whole one, grain. One wheat berry was in a whole, one whole grain. Yeah, in the white bread, it yeah. was whole grain, whole grain bread. One whole grain. They don't. They don't. People didn't realize. But by law, they were, by law they weren't lying. Right? It, it is a whole grain. It is whole grain whole bread grain. because there was one whole grain. In the, in the white bread. See, this, this is this is an example of contempt for your customer. Right. We'll lie and, and yeah. use the law. It's legal. Yeah, we're hurting the consumer, but it's legal. We're okay. This is wrong. This all goes, this all is totally directed to short-term way of thinking, short-term profit, running a business and thinking short-term instead of long-term. And and you read a book by the uh, the original CEO of Sony concerning long term versus short term. Well, that was Akio Morita, and also being an IBM brat, uh, Thomas J. Watson, who founded IBM. Yeah. Uh, about society and people, respecting your people, both did very much, and Thomas J. Watson said it best too. Uh, the majority, of most people, are victims of circumstances far beyond their control. Yet, other corporations try to exploit their problems by lying, cheating, making you mail in a rebate. You know, I mean, it all relates back. They're exploiting people that are already having a tough enough time as it is. Now you're using them even more. This is not right. This is not, this to me is not what our soldiers are dying for in foreign wars or conflicts. I'm sorry, we didn't declare war or whatever. They're dying. So we can do this to each other? We've discussed this many times. You hold the door for some people, blah, blah, blah. The majority are pretty good. But some won't even say a word, not even a grunt, not even a nephew. But this is what our soldiers are dying for? So these people can live like this and treat others like, you know, you know, nothing. Everything means something. Right. Everything has meaning and repercussions. And once your reputation is gone... I mean, by thinking short term, I mean, it's very hard to, to redeem well, yourself. Well, uh, now it's getting easy because they have companies called spin doctors. And they'll print false things like a BP coming back. After what they did with the, did with the oil spill, Denny's. Yeah, oops. Well, years ago, what they did with the black, to the poor black yeah, customers that came in now. We're oh, sorry. A few months later, you start seeing black people in the commercials all of a sudden. 
Yeah. Now nobody mentions a word. As I, I said earlier in our show today, Jimmy, we forget too quickly. Always remember, we didn't forget Pearl Harbor, did we? Nope. We didn't forget D-Day. Why forget these incidents as well? Remember all the baddest under people. People that do try to help people. People that do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. That's right. And uh, that's right. Um, you know, if you're a business person or even uh, any human being, you should always think long term, not short term. Now with uh, corporate America, it's short term thinking. You know, uh, how much money can I make or save right now? They don't think of the long-term effect. Down the road, if I get caught, we're screwed. They get a huge hefty fine. Now all yeah. that money's sucked out well, two plus more. Well, you so know a fine to a corporation is just a, a tiny slap on the wrist, a love tap. Yeah, but it's still millions you could use elsewhere to better benefit yeah. R&D or what have you. It's you crazy. Know, well, the, well, the reputation aspect of it is much more damaging because but you lose a lot of sales. But then again, what People forget. Hey, another thing Americans don't do because they're so spoiled they have to have what they want is Americans never boycott. That's a very powerful weapon for consumers. They talk the boycott, boycott all the time. Personally, I'm very knowledgeable in business, not to brag or anything, but I can't ever remember an actual boycott nope. working on any scale, much less a national scale. Can you? They price gouge. I can't think of one. They price gouge people for for a long time with SUV vehicles. You don't see people boycotting SUVs. Uh, they did. They, there was there was a situation back in the. Um, Can you think of one boycott that worked? Uh, what the hell was it? What back, did Occupy Wall Street accomplish? You know, like it could be the price of steaks. People don't stop buying steaks. Yeah, Wall Street. Uh, nobody oh. saw the inside of a, of a jail cell on, on, on Goldman Sachs or on Wall Street. Uh, uh, protests are our legal right. Yes. But How many protests have truly accomplished something, if anything? They were arrested, Billy. Who, the Occupy Wall Street? Yes. Um, well, they, there was a lot of crime there, too, rape and what have you, and abuses. And other people that were there protesting saying, I just came for the free food. Isn't that just wonderful? So that's why it never amounted to anything. I still to this day don't know what they were protesting though. But but the uh but the dishonest criminal element, they sure stick together and follow their game plan. Yeah. You know, like the banks the banksters, the uh the the crooked banksters that never saw jail, but but I'll go. of course your 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 constitutional right to protest uh, you know, nonviolently, uh, and they, they arrested these people. And, and then there's a police abuse of the protesters, you know, uh, whether it be taser, mace, or just hitting them. Uh, you know, innocent college girls being uh, physically abused yeah. by, the, by the police yeah. uh, because yeah. they want a better life. But I still don't know, you know what Occupy Wall Street was protesting. And no one can tell me. It was on a large, it's on a much larger scale because they did it all over the world. For what, against corporate America or what? Cor against the, 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 the bad economy and the bad job market. Well, none of us and, like and that. And the way employees ha are being treated nowadays, it was a, a worldwide protest against uh, a very unethical, uh, so way really of running did, a country. It did not accomplish the same. It's really no, they're, 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 they're more corrupt than yeah. ever before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the and you're, you're basically giving them more power. Because I can say, so what? What are they going to occupy again? Let them. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, Nobody cares. I mean, the Republican Congress, they get, without perks, they get around 175000 a year. A president gets 450000 yeah. a year and, while uh, retiring. They only work, estimated, they only show up at the Capitol building to, or if you want to call it work, is uh, like a few days out of the month, for God's sakes. And, and and they're always on vacation. Gee, I wish I had a job like that. Oh, you know, I heard a guy reading it off the other day in a place I was in, of what these people get upon retiring. It's sad. Great for them. Sad for us, because we're all paying for it. I mean, 450000 for the president every year. 
275000 I think, for each member of Senate, I believe, or governors. I forget which one they was reading them all down the list. I said, my nothing was under six digits. Not a one. Yeah. Every the low the lowest number I heard was one hundred sixty some odd thousand dollars. Hey, and you know what Chris you know. Christie said uh, uh, concerning the uh, the rotten economy and rotten job market and everything? He says uh, the mainstream has to uh, make sacrifices. Why doesn't the politicians well, what are, what are the make politicians sac sacrificing? They're not making sacrifices. Yeah, they have to make sacrifices. What a thing for him to say. He's not. He's not giving up anything. You know. Uh, I mean, they, they got automatic pay raises. Yeah. That's not right. It's not right. You know, it's taxpayers' money going. The defense contracts. I mean, Lockheed has been making a plane for the Air Force that hasn't been used yet, costing an, an enormous amount of money. Out. They must be having parties, these politicians, lobbyists, and corporate heads, laughing about the people. Nobody has a clue what's going on. Isn't this great here? Have another drink. Ah, oh, this is great. We're making billions here. They're laughing. Yeah. I have no proof, but I would bet on it. Hey, the top so. few United States banks, uh, they last year, uh, um, 2012, they, they made uh, $64 uh, a billion dollars in profit thanks to corporate welfare, getting freebies, taxpayers' money just given to them. It seems like all the big ones never lose. But the, the little people, the common man yeah. and woman, excuse me, we're all the ones that suffer. You know what the political slogan is that they're using? We're too big to fail. The banks are too big to fail. I heard that. Too big. We're too big to well, no, to no, fail. No, you're not hot shot. You can still fail. What they're saying is that, in a way, what they're saying is that only a big company, a corporation, can get the job done right, and small companies... Can, Small companies can, are the they, backbone of this nation. Small companies are the backbone of this nation economically and providing jobs. Yeah. Small yeah. companies, don't kid yourself, can outproduce and uh, produce better quality merchandise than any corporation. Well, we've got a lot of bad CEOs they out They cut corners. Uh, and major time. corporations with bad ethics and morals, sadly. Uh, the old school guys like Thomas Watson's and you know, Hewlett and Packard and all them. Different mindsets yeah. back there. Well, the Costco uh, CEO, CEO of Costco, he's setting a great example nowadays. I mean, he takes very good care of his people. Oh, oh, wait a minute. But our, our lights on, Jimmy, we're out of time, buddy. You know yeah. what? I think we are. And uh, I just want you people to know, anybody out there that wants to employ the services <laughs> of William H. Moore III, you know where to reach him. Yeah. Uh, and it's been a good show, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us for Mega Life 21 Live. This was the second time having our official uh, voiceover artist, William H. Moore the third. I thank you, Jimmy, for having me, buddy. That's quite right. Business talk. Everyone, we'll, we'll continue later on, all right? Yes. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.